Hello, my creative students. I'm Krupak, your teacher in this course. It's time to get to know our main tool for creating models in Minecraft, and that is Blockbench. Blockbench is a free open source 3D low poly model editor. Thanks to it, you can create low poly models for games and specifically for Minecraft. Low poly models are three dimensional models characterized by a relatively small number of polygons. This means the models have simple but clear shapes with textures that are easy for the human eye to understand. So right in front of you is the website of the Blockbench program itself. Here you can see examples of works made with this program as well as the wiki for Blockbench. But we'll talk about that in a separate lesson. What's important for us right now is the download button. The program installs quickly and updates automatically as you use it, so we'll always have the latest version. You can also use this program without installing it right in your browser. See? It's not that hard. In theory, you can even use the browser version on your phone since the program is adapted for mobile devices as well. Alright, now let's move on. One moment and here we are inside the program itself. And yes, it will look exactly the same for you too. Today we'll talk about the basic functions of the program and its workspaces. So in front of you is the basic program menu. Here you can see art and models created by the Blockbench community. Just below and to the right, you'll find a list of your own models made in the program. It also has two convenient display modes. And of course, a handy search for your model. On the left are the workspaces, which are divided into separate categories. The first category is General. Here you can find the workspace for creating a generic model. By the way, if you click on a workspace, it will show what it's for and give a short description. The generic model is suitable for Minecraft entities or anything else that can be used in other model editors or game engines. In other words, it's a universal option. Just below is the workspace for creating art. Here you can draw any pixel art of any quality or size. The next category is dedicated entirely to Minecraft. Everything here is as simple as it gets. There's something for every occasion. You can create a block or item for Java, a bedrock item or block, a modded entity, an Optifine entity, and finally even your own skin. Each of these workspaces has its own specialization and additional interfaces. For example, the Java item workspace includes a preview of how the item looks in hand. The workspaces can also differ by the code they generate, which programmers will later work with. For example, for a modded entity. In this course, we'll cover only the most common and useful workspaces, but that's something we'll discuss later in other lessons. Oh right, almost forgot! There's a separate category with tutorials from the program author himself. We'll also look at those in another lesson. Next, we'll go over all the top tabs. I'll warn you right away, once you open a workspace, the functionality of these tabs will expand. And in some cases, new tabs may even appear. So the first one we see is the File tab. Here you can create a new model, view your recent projects, open a model, and open a model from Link. Let me go ahead and explain how to share your model via Link. It's simple. Take any of your models, open the File tab, and export it using the Share function. Here you go. Now you have a link to your model that can be opened in any browser. Let's go back to our tab. You can also create a new program window, which is very convenient. And even better, you can drag your project with your mouse to create a new window. Likewise, you can merge these windows back together. Next, we have an extremely important tab for the future. The Settings tab. Here you immediately see a list of all the settings, and I wouldn't recommend changing anything here, since the program is already very well optimized by default. However, you can change the language and switch the interface appearance. For example, to a mobile layout if that's more convenient for you. Moving on. The next one is the hotkey section. This is a very useful thing that I personally use a lot. But within our beginner course, I wouldn't recommend touching it yet. It's better to first learn everything through the classic settings. And the final tab here is Theme. In it, you can customize the look of the program however you like. You can choose from the preset options or create your own custom interface as well as export and import your theme. I think I'll go with a green theme. Well, judging by my avatar, you can probably guess my favorite color. Alright, next I'm supposed to tell you about the other tabs. But just take a look, most of them looking nearly empty and unnecessary. So it's time to open the editor to see the full functionality of these tabs. 
In the File tab, we now have a Project Settings option. These settings can vary depending on the workspace. Generally, you can set the file name, the model identifier that you'll reference when programming, and also choose the UV format. But I'll explain that in our modeling lesson. The same goes for texture size. We'll cover that in the upcoming topics. Exiting here, we can now see that we can save project, save it in more detail, convert it into any other workspace format, and close the project. If you take a closer look at any name, you'll notice small tooltips showing the hotkeys. This is very convenient, because even if you change your hotkeys, representation of the interface will automatically adjust to your custom settings. The last thing we're interested in here is import, export, and save model. Let's go over them one by one. Everything here is simple and clear. With import, you can open a model that you already have on your device, and with export, you can send your model anywhere even to other 3D modeling programs, or as I mentioned earlier, publish it via link. You can even send your model directly to Sketchfab. By the way, a little moment for personal development. Sketchfab is a website where 3D artists upload their works to showcase their models in 3D. It's a great place to build your portfolio. Let's get back. The last function here is Save Model. Don't confuse it with Save Project, if you save the model through this function, it will save the texture and the model separately. I don't recommend using this function because if you save work as project, your texture will already be embedded in it. Next, we'll only look at the Help tab because the other ones will be needed later in future lessons. So, in the Help tab, you can always find any function in the program. You can view all available official documentation. You can also create a bug report. But from experience, I'll say, if you find a program bug, it's better to report it directly through the official Blockbench Discord server. Next, there's a very cool feature where you can view all your models that you've ever created, meaning you can even restore a lost model this way. Almost at the end, we have the Developer tab. There's nothing really interesting for us there, except for Reload Plugins and Reload Blockbench. Everything else isn't important for us. The second to last function is Reset Layout. This resets your model view settings. In other words, if your workspace layout is messed up and you don't know what's going on, this function will always come to the rescue and reset everything back to the default view. Our final destination is About tab, where you can find all the links to social media of the program author, also the app version displayed here, so you'll always know which version you're using. And don't forget, the program updates itself automatically to the latest version. Well, that's the end of our first lesson. If the information seemed a bit too much, don't hesitate to re-watch this video or take some time to let it all sink in. In any case, in this lesson we've managed to get to know each other and also go over the basic parameters of the program, which I think is fantastic. That's all for now. Keep creating and making awesome stuff. And now creepy bye to everyone. See you all later.